Chica Resch. You are listening to the Let's Go Devils podcast on the Primetime Radio Network. Happy Devils Friday! This is Devils After Dark, coming to you live, live from the Primetime Radio Studios here in beautiful New Jersey and Scotty's Palacio Estates. Of That's right. Beverly Hills, California. As mm-hmm. streaming live on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitter Live, and Twitch on the Let's Go Devils Network as the Devils win again in dramatic fashion. Three to one over the Buffalo Sabres in Buffalo. They didn't get buried mm-hmm. by the snow up there. They were focused. No distractions, and yes, the Devils are on a nine-game road winning streak and on a one-game overall winning streak. Can we say, uh, let's just say 14 out of the last uh, 15. How about that? Actually, you can even take it even further. You could say uh, add in... Three games, 17. 17 out of the last 19? <laughs> just the entire season? Just uh, or, the tra- yeah, their full yeah. record. Uh, <laughs> how about you just say, uh, if, if if you discount the game on uh, last Wednesday for the terrible uh, uh, rulings, uh, they're still on a 15-game winning streak. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, yes, the uh, New Jersey Hockey Devils start another streak, continue Another one, as Sam Wu was saying, this is nine in a row on the road. They are nine and one on the season. They actually have a better away record than they do home record right now. What was that one? You have to go back to the very first night. Yes. Remember against the Philadelphia Flyers? Sam Wu was down there at uh, Chickies and Pete's, right? Yeah. 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 Down in the uh, city of brotherly love over there. And uh, that was the last time... We lost on a road, and I had a good feeling that it that there was no L coming today to the New Jersey Devils. The way they played throughout this game, they were a dominant force. Once again, Akira Schmid also providing some absolutely stellar goaltending again, and it's nice. It's nice not only having goalies that make the big timely saves, that can have a, you know, a, a save percentage over 900, but the fact that we, we, we now have two of them. We have two of them, Sam Wu, that are stopping the puck at opportune times and not giving away any bad goals to the opposing team, especially when it is someone like the Buffalo Sabres who do struggle, but they, they've they got some offensive firepower as well. Tice Thompson's brother, Tage, is tearing it up over there with 13 goals already uh, on the season. So they got a full you know, line of scoring over there. But that's their problem is they're not spread out the way the Devils are across four lines where they can play 60 minutes a game. I'm a 60-minute man, baby, just like Ric Flair. Woo! Oh, man. Woo! Feeling good. Woo! That's right, Sam Woo. Woo! Wow. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That's some Ric Flair action for you. Love it. doing some Ric Flair. Love it. My shoes cost more than your house. Nothing. No, no response whatsoever. Sam was just dumbfounded by the classic Ric Flair isms. Or I should have said alligator shoes. My alligator shoes cost more than your house. There's a whole limousine sitting outside, lined with ladies, just waiting to take a ride on Space Mountain, Sam Wu. Woo! Nothing. Oh, jeez. I do the happy Devils recap. None of my none of my references whatsoever. Hopefully, someone on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitter Live, and Twitch knows at least some of what I'm talking about over here. Welcome, everybody. Horns up to you. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you celebrated with uh, friends and family yesterday. Talking about the atrocious refereeing. And how he got screwed the other night, but the devil say, oh, you know what? We'll take uh, two reverse goals the other way on actual correct goal, uh, correct calls in this game. Let's talk about it here. Uh, we mentioned Buffalo Sabres. They got some offensive power. They got some speed. Uh, their power play is, uh, what were they? I know they're definitely top 10. 
they're somewhere around like six, seven, eight, like that, that sort of range over there uh, for their power play. So they get, they got some, uh, some good uh, scoring um, uh, forwards on there, but Akira Schmid, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, everybody. Akira Schmid, that's where I wanted to go. Uh, really stood on his head and just played solid throughout the game, first, second, and third, and the uh, Devils dominated. Let's talk about first period over here. Again, Schmidt and goal. Mercer hits the post early. Sharon Govich got a great opportunity from the slot. McLeod had an excellent backhand attempt. Uh, Devils created a turnover. Tatar rips one. Nico rebound. That stopped as well. Craig Anderson. 40 or old or 50. I think he's like 50 or 60, Sam Wu. I, I, I lost track during the game. I thought Craig Anderson retired like five years ago. Uh, somehow he still played. I was like, well, maybe in the second period it'll be time for his nap. You know, like maybe he needs to take a nap, you know, by the time the second period comes and he won't be able to, uh, you know, play as well. I can't hear you, Sam. Wu, you done muted yourself. He is 330 years old in dog years. 330 years old in in Winston years okay yes. all right very nice um yeah but I was just hoping that you know maybe he needed his meds uh maybe it was time for nap you know maybe it's time for pudding or something like that you know he's gonna go and rest up for a little bit uh due to his age sorry old person jokes there uh but Craig Anderson he came up huge in that first period and so did Akira Schmidt also making some big saves on a late uh penalty kill there uh, uh, Kira Schmidt did to keep the Devils in the game, and it didn't take long moving into the second period. Uh, see, I told you, Anderson needed a nap. Come to the second period, he gives up three goals. So it's like, oh, all right, that makes sense over there. So uh, second period, about two minutes in, Eric Halla, two Mercer, two Jack Hughes. What a beautiful play this was. Passing right across the center of the ice. Boom, boom, boom. Jack comes in. Rips it from the face-off circle, and I mean, that was a laser. A laser of a rocket shot, far side. Woo! Jack Hughes just let that bad boy go, and that was pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, if you can ask me, too sweet, NWO style. Jack Hughes' is eighth goal of the year. Dawson Mercer, his sixth assist. Halla, his seventh. So you see Mercer moving up. Playing with Jack Hughes, the lines got shuffled up a little bit. Uh, it's paid off so far. And we have saw Dawson Mercer maybe struggle a little bit, five on five down there on the third line. Uh, I think the past three games he's gone on the on the score sheet over here since this move has been made. So really good, uh, really good for him, or maybe not the last game, right? Um, but um, really good for Dawson Mercer to see his play starting to elevate a little bit more. Um, with Jack Hughes over there, you see Jack producing uh, even without Jesper Bratt by his side. It's everything you want. Eric Halla is still a beast in the face-off circle. Although he, he did take that that penalty for the violation, even though his hand was still on this. Does his hand have to come off the stick and actually hand pass it? Or it's just if he... I was, I was a little confused by that rule because that one is, is rather new. Uh, I thought his hand had to come off the stick. See, to th afford to be this it. is where we go again, and uh, I don't want to interrupt your uh, Happy Devils recap, but the rule book is so freaking complicated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was there an amendment? I know what you mean. Was there an amendment? Did an attorney uh, come in and, uh, you know, spoil the party, and we can't have any sort of hand or some kind of hand pat? Who knows? Did it, did I have it, no idea. I yeah. thought that your hand had actually come off the your stick and like cover the puck, and then because his hand was still on the stick, and he just kind of like it looked like he was going to hit the butt end of the stick on the puck. But I don't know. It could be in, in the language. I'm not really sure because, like Sam was said, I'm not a lawyer. So uh, yeah. Either way, uh, the Devils killed that off. So good job on them. Uh, that was that. That was I believe that was the one late in the first period there that Akira Schmidt made some big saves on. So two minutes into the second, Jackie Boy gets us on the scoreboard there with that wicked laser rocket of a snapshot. It's like Peyton Manning. I got a, a wicked laser rocket arm. Um, that's Jack Hughes in a shot over there. And not too long later, about three minutes and forty-seven seconds later, someone who is starting to really find his game out there. Talking about the third line, Jesper. 
Boquist. And this whole goal was created by some hard work by our man, Igor Sharon Govich. Behind the net, I can't remember who, which uh, Sabres D-man it was, but he went down, lost the puck. Sharon Govich picks it up, and a quick, nice backhand pass right out into front. Boquist is there in tight on the goaltender, Craig Anderson, and he muzzles it through. He takes a shot, and I don't know if it hit in between Anderson's arm, if it went off his shoulder. Somehow, it just kind of like, whoop, like popped up. I don't know if it went through and up or if it went, oh, somehow or another. It went up, but it went up and back. It went right over his shoulder, landed just before the goal line, and gave us a nice little roll. Puck was bouncing everywhere tonight, by the way, as well. Um, you would think with all that snow up there, they would have the good ice in Buffalo as well. But the puck was bouncing everywhere, and it bounced right into the Sabres net for a Devils goal. That's right, Jesper Boquist, his third of the year, coming at 547. Igor Sharangovich gets the lone primary assist on that, his sixth of the year. So Devils are up 2-0. Akira Schmidt, again, big save on uh, Tyson Jost coming in on a partial breakaway. Um, I know Tage Thompson whipped out the toe drag there in the second. I believe he missed the net on that one. And then right after, um, was it McLeod or was it Wood? I wrote it down here, didn't I? Miles Wood. Miles Wood charged in. Came up the wing on his backhand, and man, he I thought he was going to pass across to Nate Bastion, and uh, he lifted a wicked backhander that also just missed the net. Um, eventually, the Sabres do get on the board uh, from the transition. They get a shot off on a two-on-one. Uh, Hollis stick kind of deflects it. The stick gets tossed as well towards Akira Schmid, um, and it's got a little bit of a change up there. Uh, for um, the Sabres. Uh, Olofsson got it, actually. His 11th. So there you go. There's another guy with double digits on the Sabres. Uh, Olofsson, his 11th on the season at 14-19 of the second period. Kind of a weird goal. Credit to Hall for trying to get back there to cover on the, uh, you know, the two-on-one. Um, and uh, he did what he can do, but the uh, the stick went flying over there. So, Yeah. Devils now up 2-1, but like we've seen this team do all season long, we have we have been the team that gets scored upon so many times late in the period. Um, now we are the team that does the damage late. We are the team that does the response. We are the team that goes out there and kills the momentum of the opponent. We don't away anymore we take it away and that's what we did uh not only what was it 14 19 was olafson and then thomas tatar gets his fifth at 17 55 of the second period again a nice late period goal within those, those final five minutes when teams can really be making a push when teams can really be trying to get that momentum going into the intermission to come out hot in the third the devil's Shut it down again. What a play uh, by Thomas Tatar over here. The Devils actually lost the faceoff in the defensive zone. Nico Heischer lost a faceoff in the defensive zone. It doesn't happen uh, very often over here. But the good thing is Jesper Bratt was smart, light on his feet, and jumped right on that puck before the Sabres got possession, and he was able to chip it ahead to... Nico Heischer, who brought the puck up ice into the zone. And with Tatar to his side, his back left side, he's coming up the left wing. All right, so uh, Tatar is outside here. He's able to drop it back to him, kind of to the side. And uh, Tatar just lets a wicked shot go. Um, low far side past Anderson. We've been seeing so many of the high far side shots. This one was down low to fool the goaltender. Tatar, his fifth. From Nico Heischer, his 14th assist, and Jesper Brad, his 17th assist on the season. Both of those gentlemen are operating at over a point a game for your New Jersey Hockey Devils. Third period, more of the same here, except no goals. No goals, but the Devils poured it on. I got to look here just so I can see. Well, they only had eight shots in the third period. The Sabres did have 13 in the third. Uh, but still, the Devils were getting quality chances over here. 
uh, in the third period. They um, pulled the goaltender. Say it was pulled the goalie around three-ish minutes. Uh, Schmidt made a really quick, great save uh, after that to kind of, again, you hear the crowd getting into it. Uh, the Sabres threw a couple big checks, you know, near the end of the game. Try to get the crowd riled up. Try to get a little energy. Come here, uh, Akira Schmidt shut it down. He made a huge save, and then who was there? The guy who had a standout game. Was he in the three stars of the game? He wasn't, but he should have been because he wasn't on the score sheet. Although he could have been because he had a couple of really the big monster blasts from the point. I'm talking about Ryan Graves. We're going off the rails on a gravy train. All right. You're on like Wayne's World there all of a sudden trying to do the crazy train solo. Either way. I like it and I just that. got I just got docked some woo bucks. I know. I got docked woo bucks for singing right there, so I'll have to talk a little bit more to make up for that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't do that. Uh, but Ryan Graves, after Akira Schmid uh, made the save, um, I, think, I don't know. It might have been Thompson again. I can't remember who took the shot. But the gravy train going down and flashing the glove. Huge glove save from the gravy train, deflecting the puck out of play there on a scramble in front of the net uh, when the Sabres were attacking six on five with Anderson pulled from the goal. They eventually, you know, got a um, got an icing, so they had to put Anderson back in. The Devils wouldn't let the Sabres through the neutral zone. Killed a lot of time that way, um, and they ended up finishing it off the game strong. Smart, strong, defensive play, shutting down a Sabres team where when it's in the third period, they're going to they're gonna clip their lines. They're not going to roll all four. So you're going to have these, you know, Tage Thompsons and Olafsons coming at you at all times. And the Devils did an amazing job holding them off for a 3-1 victory. Big shout to Akira Schmid, who has just been unbelievable in goal, being called up recently from the AHL. You know about Blackwood getting hurt, but he is 4-0 now on the season. The Devils have won nine straight on the road. Like we said, their last loss on the road, first night of the season back there in Philly. They are 9-1 and one overall, 8-3 and three at home. Ryan Graves, what a game, filling up those lanes, making that big glove, glove hand save, whatever you want to call it there, at the end of the game. And he had multiple, he had like I, th- I think I can recall about three of those big monster slappers from the point uh, that Anderson played well on. No doubt, he's got the third star of the game. How many times have we seen that uh, in these Devils games where the opposing goalie ends up being the third star because the Devils are just peppering them with shot after shot and quality chance after quality chance. Jack Hughes goes number one. Nico Heischer got your number two. And then again, as I said, Craig Anderson, your third star of the game. Shots on goal for the Devils, 16-20 in the second period, eight in the third for a raining blood slayer tribute total of 44. It's raining pucks from the Devils on the ice. Sabres had 7, 14, 13 for a total of 34. Uh, faceoffs, Devils have the advantage 58% to 42. Both teams 0 for 1 of the power play. Like seeing that. What's well, been one of the things that we've talked about? Even through the big, long 13-game winning streak is the Devils were taking a lot of penalties. They didn't mess around like they did with Edmonton, like they did a little bit there with Toronto. They didn't mess around with this powerful power play that the Sabres have going for them. Like I said, I can't remember their exact ranking, but I definitely, I know they're single digits, like top 10 in the league, but I think they're on the bottom side of the 10. It might, it's either 7 or 8, somewhere around there in that, that range still. Uh, only one penalty taken by the Devils, and that was the Halla face-off violation. So there you go. Hits. Uh, Devils out hit 23-15. to 15. Uh, 15 blocks for the Devils. Again, no surprise here. Opposing team putting up a lot of blocks against the Devils because they take so many shots. 18 blocks for the Sabres. Devils only one giveaway. <laughs> like seeing that over there. Uh, they had seven takeaways. Um, to the Sabres, 10. So, overall, great game for the boys to get back into the swing of things after getting screwed over by the refs in the last game. We all know it. We all saw it. We've all been posted videos. 
everywhere of other goaltender interferences that weren't called, of other goalies getting knocked down. We got to move on. And that's what the boys did today. We can't go back, unfortunately, and fix that game and have it restarted and have the winning streak continue. We have to move on from it. And that's what they did. They're starting another streak and they continued another one on the road. Nine and oh. Nine out of the last nine, they have won. Nine straight. I'm sorry, nine and one. I said I said nine and oh. I'm sorry. Nine and one, but nine straight ever since that first night loss to Philadelphia, which seems like eight, that almost seems like preseason. It's like that that was the same team that lost to Philadelphia. Are you sure that wasn't a preseason game? I think that was a preseason game. Oh, and by the way, Captain, oh, my Captain, the Devils are still undefeated when Nico Heischer is on the score sheet. Like he was tonight for the uh, the third goal, Tom Sitar, his fifth, along with Jesper Bratt. Nico Heischer, when he scores, goal or assist, or both, the Devils are undefeated. What a game. Don't like those Sabres uniforms, by the way. The jerseys look okay. The white pants as well. I'm just like, what's going on here? It kind of looks a little beer league-ish to me. Like, come on, give them the blue. Those Sabres Sabres jerseys. Look like an inline Yeah, those Sabres, that Sabres blue is so nice. Like, I'm actually a really big fan of their jerseys. I love the, uh, the blue and yellow with the buffalo and the two swords. Like, I love that jersey. I think it looks, I actually really, I like the Bills jersey as, as well, tell you the truth. Um, but I, I like, ugh, just give them a little bit of that blue. Why do, why do they have to have the white pants with the white socks, with the white jerseys? The jersey by itself looks okay. But, eh, eh, eh. Poor Dano and Bill Spaulding trying to follow that. Chico. Oh man. That that's hard to follow on the ice. Yeah. It is. You know, when they're you know, white on white, it's it like is. master shake from aqua Teen. When he makes his business cards black on black. I don't care if people will be able to read it, sir. I want it black on black. (laughs) Oh, man. Either way, love to hear what you think about it, Devils fans. On YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitter Live, Twitch. We're talking Devils After Dark exclusively on the Let's Go Devils Podcast Network. I'm Scotty, and let's bring in the king of the football calls right now and get his opinion on this game. Sam Wu, what say you about, what is this game? I think this was game number 20. Game 21. 21. Game 21. 21. 17th Devils victory. What say you about this game, Sam? Mentally tough, this New Jersey Devils team. We talked about it on game day live, how they, they, Again, when we talked about the fans throwing things on the ice, three bad reversals, and their their mindset, their maturity never wavered. They were focused, and they almost pulled it off and put the equalizer in the last game. Going into this game, there was some concern. Well, after being on a 13-game heater on that high, how would they react? Is this a trap game? They're going up to Buffalo. They're spending Thanksgiving kumbaya together in a hotel somewhere up north. Guess what? The yeah. Devils came out firing on all cylinders, peppering Craig Anderson, the 41-year-old, 330 years old in dog years. And uh, he held his own to his <laughs> credit, but the New Jersey Devils were relentless. They were putting the pressure on a team that's, Built very similar to the Devils, but they are about a couple years behind the Devils. So they did not let up. They did not. What are you laughing at? I'm sorry. No, I'm just reading some of the comments. As I'm listening. Go ahead. Oh, oh 69 mega. Yeah, it's 69 megas. Back. Yeah, it's just, they're celebrating. <laughs> yeah, well, it's better than uh, 69 megas cousin at American Whiskey uh, oh, last, boy. last time, you know. I think it was 69 Central. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the, the Devils themselves were on a mission to take care of business in Buffalo. Second period mm-hmm. has been the Devils' go-ahead period. 
stark contract yeah. from, uh, contrast from previous seasons. And they took a 3-1 lead. They took a 3-1 lead. They kept the pressure on. To, Buffalo had some uh, moments there. Kira Schmid, I thought, played excellent, but he did get lucky yeah. there. A lot of crossbars, a lot of pressure, but the bottom line is Buffalo, you know, they only got one past them, and yeah. the Devils held on. They were a little lucky there, but you know what? Sometimes the way you play the game, even though it's the, hitting the crossbar, you know what? It was just enough for the Devils to win, and then the third period was pretty much, you know, back and forth. Still surprised they couldn't hit the open netter. But you know what? They took care of business. And I saw some smart plays as well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, just just not throwing the puck up the middle uh, carelessly. I, I think the Devils cut that down quite a bit this game. And uh, on we go tomorrow against the Capitals, which really I was looking forward to more of that game than any other game this week. Because that's the one team that gives them trouble. That was the one team that they really didn't show up and didn't show what they can do. So Saturday yeah. night at the Rock tomorrow is going to be one of those games where I think the intensity of the fans is going to be a factor. I think the fans remember what mm -hmm. happened on Wednesday. I think they're going to get a little smarter this time around and uh, try to harness their enthusiasm in a more positive way, more productive way uh, of expressing their opinion. And I think the fans will do that. I think we just got a little slap on the wrist and a warning. Um, although I think the media was a little unfair, especially up in Toronto about that. But regardless, of course, regardless, the Devils win tonight 3-1. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You're happy. Business as usual. Ready for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Max Pedinoff here. Tic Tac Jack. Woo! Love it. That is exactly what that first goal was. It was just boom, boom, boom. Right in. Yep. Great play by Halla and Mercer. And Mercer has looked phenomenal up there with Jack Hughes. Love seeing them. Mr. Moo Guy. 40-plus shots. Oh, Max, he did take a nap. That's right. I knew Craig Anderson was too old and he needed a nap mid-game. You know, he had to lay down there for like 20 yeah. minutes or so right there yeah. in the middle. And the Devils took advantage of that and scored three goals. Wow. <laughs> How did you get out of the home, <laughs> Craig Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you retire like 10 years ago? What the hell? Akira appreciation post. There you go, Dennis. That's right. I thought Akira Schmidt had a great, great game tonight. There was one. I know Dano mentioned it too on the broadcast about how just Akira. He was already down on his knees, and man, those legs were just flat against the ice. It was. I think it was. It might have been Opozo who we should we should point out. I almost forgot to mention that the two goals about yeah the getting pushed into the net and both of them very obvious. And being called back very quickly. Um, so about like to see the when they try to when uh, Schmidt was on the on the ice, flat on his back. I mean, yeah, they did it twice. So there was you know, Opozo was the first one in the first period. I can't remember who did the second one, but either way, this was a different play um, where uh, he was coming in on the side of the net and uh, went basically made to make a backhander, much like Miles Wood did. Uh, on that one break. And Akira Schmid just, man, he's a big boy. Yeah. And he straightened out his back, even though he was down on his knees. And he just took up so much room in that goal. And you saw him hugging the post. There was, there was nowhere to shoot. Yeah. There was nowhere to shoot. And just seeing that, I'm sure it makes you happy. It puts a big smile on my face that we have a goaltender that can actually pull that off. Yeah. I mean, and he's our backup right now. Our, our, no, our backup, you know, backup. one of our backup, backup. one of our, pro yeah, one of the, it's, yeah, he's the backup to the backup to the backup. Yeah, essentially. 
Suddenly the Devils and, have goaltenders. And when when he was in the AHL, I think he was. I think Nico. They were riding Nico Dawes in the AHL, so he was the backup down there as well. But he's he's another you know good find in the draft in recent years that probably should have got drafted and, and fell. And Tom Fleece Gerald got another one. Hopefully, three, you know, three jury's three. obviously still out. Think of three of them. I mean. All you need is one, right? So you got Dawes, Schmidt, and the, that kid T.J. Brennan uh, that they dra- mm. just drafted, which was the best goalie in the draft, and they got him in a later round. I mean, you know, goaltenders, you never know with them. You know, they're not exactly, yeah. you know, um, you know, a shoe in if they're in the first round drafted, uh, but you know. Look, uh, I'm I'm very happy with the goaltending right now. I'm happy how the defense is playing, but the one thing I'm really, really, really happy about, Scotty, yeah, the attention to detail in terms of having your teammates back. If uh, mm-hmm. you know, defenseman pinches in, there's always a forward back at the point. Uh, there's always help. Whenever there's danger, have you noticed that there's always mm-hmm. help? It used to be we just leave the devils just leave guys r- wide open from the crease. Now there's like help. Uh, the the uh, defense slides. Gravy train. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Brendan Smith. That's well. That's that that sort of mentality and that fortitude. Like uh, Mick Foley, got to have the testicular fortitude of a, of a Brendan Smith who's going to yeah. bring it every single night. To a John yep. Marino who's going to be out there skating with the best of them, and these are these are, these are guys you know along with Ryan Graves as well. I mean, our defense is pretty. Is listen, there's not. Who's the youngest guy on our defense? I can't even. Is Marino the youngest guy in our defense? Siegenthaler? Like we have a pretty. You know, we don't have like these new. Like on our forwards, we have a lot of young kids. But right now on defense, you know, they're 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 seasoned defenseman I, I think you can say um right am I, am I missing anyone ball sent back down yeah, they're so all seasoned defensemen severson experience marino has experience but he may be the youngest at this point wow i never thought about that it's either marino or siegenthal or it's one or the other yeah but they wow. all played in the nhl for you know a number of years now and so I, I think you see that in the defensive play. You see a lot of the, the smarter plays being made. And, I, and again, a big credit to uh, Coach McGill for working with this team Yep. And, and putting it all together out there. But Marino's made a hell of a difference on the ice with everything that he can do. Um, but either way, there's a lot with the forwards also playing defense, playing a full game, not getting caught sleepwalking. How many times did we say that the last two years, Sam? Well, they're sleepwalking. Uh, pretty much, they did great game. in the first, and then they slept walk through the second and third. Yep. No passengers, like Dano likes to say. Dano likes to say no passengers. There's no passengers on this team, and I think a lot of it comes from those. I mean, Palat's not there right now, but just that mentality that someone like a Brendan Smith brings to the table, someone like an Eric Holler brings to the table. They're going to go out there, they're going to play the right way, and they're going to grind it out for 60 minutes every single game. It makes what Nico Heischer is saying in the locker room mean so much more when you get veterans coming in and they're playing that way. Then that's when those young kids are like, oh, okay. I got to step up my game. Now when you got a Jesper Bratt, who the whole everyone on that team, every player on there knows that he bet on himself. For a contract, and you know they're all keeping an eye on that to see what he gets after this. Yeah, they're probably they're probably negotiating right now. They're probably telling Jack, "Don't pass it to him. Don't pass it to him. Don't pass it. <laughs> Shoot it wide if he passes it to you." Oh my goodness, Marino, sixteen days younger than uh, than Seeks. Okay, there you go. Is Marino twenty four? Is he only twenty four? I mean. But he's been in the league for a while. Wow. But either way, those those veterans. I don't know. I it just I guess 
the kids were too young with what I mean, I mean, so that's the thing is some of those kids are now turning into men like we've seen, and they're also becoming those leaders as well. So, you know, you can't really say you can't look back like two years ago and say, well, what the hell? We had Paul Mary, you know, like, I don't think that's I don't think that's fair to put that on palms. You know, yeah, but I think they got that right. They got the right mix in the locker room now. Yes, and they're they healthy. That's a a key thing as well. They're healthy. Knock on wood. Don't want to see anyone, uh, you know, get injured or anything like that because they've been playing so well. But I think that's been a key. No random pucks to the face to Nico to Dougie, where they're missing a couple weeks at a time. Remember at the beginning of the season when Nico had his his thing, and we were all just like, "No, please, no, not again." Oh, How can yeah. this? How can this happen? We yeah. should. I wish we could go back in time to those first two games and just be like, "What? Huh? What? Why?" Like if we could just go back and just laugh at ourselves or, after those first two games, or we were all if, miserable. If we had a we were like, here we go again. If we it's had a, be another wasted season. Did they not learn anything? What the hell? If we had a DeLorean 1.21 gigawatts, we could go back in time <laughs> and get on the podcast and be like, yo, I know you're owing too, but trust me, it's going to get better. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Just be it patient. Just be Just patient. Be patient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, we have been doing you versus Woo here um, on the show all season long. It is Sam Woo doing his score predictions and placing the bets on betstamp.app that's what this segment is brought to you by betstamp.app download it play along have some fun as long as you can gamble responsibly it's time for you versus woo we need to get like a little sound effect like with the drum roll and like you know mr announcer guy you versus woo with a lot of reverb on the voice We should have auditions. Next time we have a, a live event at American Whiskey, we should have some people just uh, voice a you, you versus woo. Versus woo. You versus woo. What the hell is a gigawatt? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Are you telling me that you made a time machine out of a DeLorean? <laughs> Well, this is heavy. Is there something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull in the future? Why is everything so heavy? <laughs> Save the clock tower. Save the <laughs> clock tower. Hey, we finally got a movie that Sam knows references from. Of All course. right. Yeah. Make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's get to it. You versus Woo brought to you again. One more time by betstamp.app. Sam, let's talk with the uh let's talk first about the handsome man, Vinny Parisi, host of Game Day Live. What did he have for his score prediction? He had five three devils. Five three devils. Okay, that's gonna have to be a big L for Vinny there because he didn't get either score right. And I've already heard the news. I see uh Ramona is talking about it, others are talking about it here. Sam Wu, are you about to go to two thirteen and six on the season? What was your score prediction for today? Well, I think we need to be a little dramatic with this announcement. Did I not just do that? I I, I drummed it. I drummed it up for you. Hold Even though we all already are no. Oh boy. This is a Let's Go Devils podcast, Sam Wu, uh, bet update. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. I pick, I predicted 3-1. <laughs> Can't, don't disaster. you just like have the Price is Right winning theme or something like that? Can we get like a ding, 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 ding? You know what? Let me see. Because I used to have all these... Um, <laughs> Oh boy. All these uh, clips, but they. Well, the tension is just killing me now. I can't get them. I'm waiting to hear what Sam Wu. I mean, you wanted tension. You wanted drama. 
This is drama, Sam Wu. This is how you do it over here. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Three one. I predicted. I, 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 I admit. I was. I, I, I was. I was trying to. I was actually cheering against our guys if they were going to score. I, I was. Uh, I just want to be right. I just want to be right for a change. <laughs> oh boy, Angelo was close. Oh no, wait, he had four three. Yeah, Devils won. That's all that matters. Well, Sam Wu, congratulations to you. You are now officially two thirteen and six on the season. I'm writing down your new record over here. Of course, we're giving Sam uh, an OTL if he gets at least one of the scores right. You know, he's got to have one of them right. He gets an OTL, but two. 13 and 6 on the season. Sam Wu with his score predictions right there. Uh, like we said, you can play along and have some fun as long as you can gamble responsibly with uh, betstamp.app. Go ahead and uh, download it now from the old app store and yep. check out Sam Wu on there. And Vinny Parisi. Yep. Oh, hey, oh. It's because of Vinny. Well, Sam Wu, we're going to be back tomorrow. Holy, is there another game tomorrow? Yeah. It's a back to back, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, Robert Usi's putting, he's got four two devils over the Capitals tomorrow. Man, should I make a should I make a prediction? Yeah, I want you to make a prediction. Right now? Make a prediction. Oh. Actually, that sounds that sounds pretty darn good there, Robert. Four two actually sounds like a really uh sounds like a solid you know what? I'll say I'll say uh five two devils. I'll say they'll get they'll get the empty netter. I was going to say they'll be 3-2 and they get the empty net out of 4, but I'll say it'll be 4-2 with the Caps trying to put a lot of pressure on at the end of the game to get it to 4-3 and the Devils get an empty net goal. 5-2. That's what I'll say. How about gonna, that? I, I'm going to make a bold prediction. Okay. I'm going to make it right now, and I'll carry that over. Just remind me what I said on um, – <laughs> so, so I'll remember for game day live. <laughs> You want to hear my bold prediction? Yes. <laughs> Spit it out, Sam. V Tech. V Tech. He's gonna he's gonna get the Angel's got three two. Oh my goodness, he's got three nothing. Max has got six three. Okay. What do you got, Sam Wu? Four nothing over the oh, Capitals. Four wow. nothing. Yep. That's my prediction. For Sam worked nothing. hard on that, on that graphic. That's why he was he was going with that all night. Much like his uh, John Marino, or no, what was it? The Keith Yandel. We were oh, like, yeah. I was like, I don't worry about doing the Keith Yandel thing. Sam's like, No, I made this graphic. We must oh, yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to boo this man. <laughs> yeah. yeah well we're gonna be at american whiskey uh, tomorrow i'll be there oh that's right it's a home game yeah, yeah. i almost forgot american yeah i'll whiskey. be there Get on around, down there i'll be there around uh, 6 p.m eastern um i'm gonna be flying in i'm gonna be like racing into the bar uh on the helicopter yeah in the helicopter um uh, chicken tender tosses uh, outside of American whiskey after after the podcast. All right. Yeah. So and the woo copter. It's kind of like the bat copter, except it's it's got a big woo. It's got a big W across there. We could get you like W, you know, batarangs like ninja stars, you know, like, but they'll just be W's. Wow. Woo man. That's that's what Pete woo calls man. me. Payton calls huh? Woo Man. She's like, hi, Woo Man. Woo Man. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, All right, Sam Woo. Well, let's wrap it up. I see a lot of people. Oh, there's Brett, and he's got 4-1. Yeah, go ahead and put in your uh, your score predictions to the old chat there if you want. That way we got it down in writing. Be able to check him out again tomorrow. I said 5-2. So uh, we'll see how it all turns out. Yeah. What, did you even say your score? What was your, what did you say? You never even said your score, Sam Wu. No, I did. I said four nothing. Shut up. Oh, four nothing? Oh, okay. Four nothing. Oh, that's right. New Jersey. Never mind. I got distracted by the uh the, the wonderful graphics. 
<laughs> of Sam Wu. I love it. Um, and by the way, someone asked, we don't actually have any Devils After Dark uh, merchandise or shirts, but I mean, that's something I can, uh, I can look into. We're working, working on it. We're working on it. I have it. a couple friends out here in LA too that like doing that, that, that do that stuff. Maybe I can get some, um, some beer, beer koozies and stuff like that. Maybe I can get uh, like the Devils After Dark logo put on there. Uh, uh, maybe I get some lighters, some stuff like that, you know? I got a good buddy that does does those things, so he's always he's always uh, hey, yeah, just let me know, man. So <laughs> is that how he talks? Not really, actually. No, <laughs> I don't know why I do it like that. <laughs> hey, Scotty, well, let me if you guys have anything that you prefer. Can I have a beer with that koozie? Can, 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 well, <laughs> what, what size beer fits in that koozie? Because I, I like to drink beer. If it, uh, if you're buy, can you buy some for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll score a goal if you buy me some beer, right? <laughs> I wonder if they. Oh, Dawson Mercer to doesn't podcast. sound like that. <laughs> Dawson Mercer doesn't sound like that. Don't don't try to talk to him like that. If you ever meet him at a game, don't throw <laughs> things on the ice. We've been saying this all season. Yeah. Well, we made the joke about throwing quick check subs or Wawa subs on the ice. We know that came to fruition uh, the other night, but those refs pissed us off. Just try not to do it again, Devils fans. Even if the refs do piss us off. It well, is what it is. It well, happened. Well, but... it's one thing that happens once, but if it happens again, it's not. It, it's going to brand us yeah. the Devils fans yeah. as being a, a bunch of losers. So. I would not – that should not be a habitual habit. That should be a once in yes. a while when it's, when it's you know. Devils after moment. dark, 69 megaphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That takes the cake right there. Thank you, oh, my goodness. Your beefalytics are like none other, sir. Uh, All right, Smoke, Sam. Smokey we'll... Dan says Devils After Dark seems similar to Oilers After Dark. What is he talking about? I don't know. I guess there's a an Oilers show. Oh, Jesse's got eight three over here. John's got five three. Eric's got four one. Josh has got three one. Yeah, I don't know, Smokey Dan. I've never I've never listened to that show because I'm usually doing Devils games over here. But I would imagine there's probably some Oilers fans doing podcasts. You know, after the show, so it makes sense. But we're not affiliated uh, in any way. But kudos to them. I'm I'm sure if you're an Oilers fan, it's an enjoyable podcast. They're a fun team to watch. I do see a lot of Oilers games out here on the West Coast because uh, they're always on. You know, later in the day and stuff like that. So I do get to check them out. I mean, obviously, you watch Connor McDavid. It's a fun team to watch. So, and by the way, I think it was. Oh man, was it Ryan? Somebody, oh man, Rick, Rick Kane, thank you for subscribing as well. Uh, we forgot to mention that. If you can go ahead and hit the like, follow, subscribe button on YouTube. Again, it doesn't cost anything. There's no subscription. It just lets you know that when we do go live for Game Day Live or Devils After Dark or the uh, Sunday Night Let's Go Devils podcast uh, or Wednesday Night State of the Fan Address with Nick Milano from Pucks and Pitchforks. We'll give you a little alerts about that. It does not go into the Mrs. Wu jewelry, Sam Wu screwed up fund, you know, um, that he has in that big jar right behind him, you know, for screaming John Marino football calls at two in the morning when the Devils were on their Western Canada trip. It does not go into any sort of funds like that. It is just a subscription to YouTube that says, hey, your favorite uh, Devils uh, podcast has started. Maybe yeah. you should tune in right now. Yeah. Smokey Dan. And this year, we keep talking about them winning, which is even better. We're not even going. We haven't had one devil's therapy session yet so far this year. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Not that we need one. We don't want one. It's nice not to have them. Okay. We I think we are we're already on maybe our third session by now. Last season, Sam. We might have had our third a court we're officially a quarter into the season, so we might have had about three devil's therapy sessions by now last last year. 
yeah. with the Yule log just burning in the background, right? Remember that? That was... Oof. Oh, boy. Times have changed, and they've ta- changed for the better. Let's hope it keeps going tomorrow uh, at The Rock with the Capitals coming to town. And, of course, like Sam was saying, he'll be across the street at American Whiskey. If you're going to the game or if you just want to go hang out and toss some chicken tenders... With Sam Wu, you can do that. They'll have the game on all the TVs over there while it's on. So go to American Whiskey, hang out, grab a drink, have some food, say hello to Sam Wu, and I'll see you afterwards for Devils After Dark. Sam, turn it over to you for the final goodbye. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank all those listening. Be back tomorrow. Game Day Live, American Whiskey, around 6 p.m. Eastern, and Devils After Dark. Till next time, let's go Devils.